This is a regular tram stop in Prague, Czech Republic. The vast majority of tram stops in the city look roughly like this, with trams running in the street, either mixing with car traffic or in the middle of the street in its own right of way. The stations consist of a sign and usually of a simple platform and shelter. However, in a few parts of the city, this is not the case. In select parts of the city, the trams are treated more as light rail than a traditional urban tram system, and their infrastructure reflects that. In this video, we'll take a trip to Barandov and Modřany, the two districts of Prague that handle trams differently from the rest of the city. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. The district of Barandov is located here, in the southwest of Prague. It was built in the 1920s and 30s as a garden city concept. This movement in urban planning sought to create planned residential communities, away from the overcrowded and dirty cities of the early 20th century. Since its creation, up to the 80s, the district was a relatively low-density area, primarily dominated by the local movie studios. Because of its location on a plateau, high above a lot of the city, Barandov has always been a little bit isolated in terms of transport. Before the 1980s, the only way to get to Barandov was by quite narrow, winding roads, either by car or by bus. In the 1980s, the former communist government decided to build a new panel housing development, housing up to 20,000 people. Combined with this new housing district, the authorities built a new, wide, four-lane road connecting the city with Barandov and the Prague Ring Road, about which I have actually made a video, link is in the description. From the completion of the new housing district up to 2003, the good people of Barandov had to rely on buses or personal cars. However, in the 90s, the need for a higher capacity mode of transport became apparent. Several options were considered. There were proposals to connect Barandov to the National Railway Network and to run classic heavy rail trains to the district. Another proposal was to build a new road through the protected nature reserve called Prokopské údolí and to run trolley buses on it. However, the solution was eventually settled on this, a double track tram line climbing up the hill to Barandov on a viaduct, which runs parallel to the aforementioned four lane road. After getting up to the plateau, the line splits from the road, going through two tunnels to reach the panel housing estate. To be clear, I will talk about the original line opened in 2003 in this video, reading from Hlubočepe to Sídliště Barandov. Since then, the line has been extended two times, up to the lower density residential district of Slivenets. This extension added three new stations, Náměstí Olgy Šemplugové, Holině and Slivenets. These were built in a more traditional fashion, with the stations and line itself being built like the majority of other ones in the city. Now that that's out of the way, Let's get back to the original line, opened in 2003. In my opinion, this line is special, because it's built more as a light rail line than a traditional urban tram line. According to Wikipedia, light rail is defined as rolling stock similar to a tram, check, exclusive right of way. There are two level crossings for cars, but a lot of potential crossing points are avoided by tunneling or bridging, so half check. There are three more, two for pedestrians to access the stations and one for public transport company service vehicles. All three are located in stations, so I'd argue that those don't really count because the trams already have to slow down to stop at the stations. Still, ideally, to be considered as a true light rail line, all level crossings should be avoided. Higher capacity than a tram, half check, the tunnels allow the trams to run quicker and on a less circuitous route, which results in higher passenger capacity. While not a full light rail line, this line is built closer to such standards than most tram lines in the city. Another notable feature of the line are the station buildings. Unlike most tram stops in the city, which consist of a sign and usually a platform and a shelter, the stations on this line are actual buildings themselves, some of which are interesting pieces of modern architecture. Due to the almost complete grade separation, passengers actually have to go up or down a flight of stairs in three out of the six stations on the line. Each station also has an assigned color. Going from the inner city to the district, the first, Lubočepe, has white. Geologická has yellow. Gbarandovu has blue. Čeplinovo náměstí has red. Poliklinika Barandov has green. And lastly, 
sídliště Berendov has white again. However, the architecture of the line and the stations have come under criticism because of the completely different design compared to other stations, high cost of construction and maintenance, and the need for frequent repairs. I am not an architect, nor do I plan to study it at college, so I can give you an educated opinion. But personally, I like the designs of the stations. I feel like it's a breath of fresh air compared to the minimalist design of other stations. Overall, the tram line in Barandov is a vital public transport link, which gives the local population a viable alternative to driving on the often clogged road leading to the city. While not as advanced as in Barandov, there is one more line in the city that I would consider special. This is Modrany, a district in the south of Prague, on the right bank of the Vltava river. While the district has a heavy rail line, with a few small train stations concentrated near the river, the most important transit link connecting Modrany with the city is its tram line. Unlike Barandov, Modrany was its own independent village, founded in the Middle Ages. The sleepy village started heavily urbanizing in the late 19th century, and by the 20th century, it was a full-blown suburb of Prague. In 1968, Modrany was officially annexed by Prague, <laughs> integrating it into the Prague public transport system. At that time, public transport service consisted of a heavy rail line running along the right bank of the Vltava River and several bus lines. A tram connection to Modrany was proposed all the way back in 1936, and over the years, progress was slowly being made. In 1959, the line made it to the current Nadraji Branik station. After that, it took 36 years to get another extension. On the 26th of May 1995, the extension from Nadraji Branik to Sidlište Modrane was opened. Because of its trunk line status, it is a fully great separated line between the stations of Přístaviště and Čechova Štvrť, and in certain segments, it is a fully elevated tram line. I believe that this is the only elevated tram line in the city. This allows the trams to run faster, and by extension, to offer a more competitive alternative to driving. The line has recently been extended all the way to Libuš, which will host a future station on the D Metro line. But with the way it's going, I expect to make a video about it from a retirement home. Anyways, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with 3 membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description, any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Arrow Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye. Since it's in sh <laughs> Now that that's out of the- mm, Bro, can I please read and speak? Thank you. Higher capacity than a tram, half check. The tunnels allow the trams to run quicker and on- Bro.